Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands and begin to give God the glory and the honor and the praise that he's deserving of? Come on. Come on, just for a little bit. Come on, just for a little bit. That's what we came for. We came to honor him. We came to adore him. We came to love on him. We came to bless on, bless him. Come on, come on, come on. Just push a little bit further. Push a little bit further. Push a little bit further. He brought us from last week to this week. He brought us from last week to this week. And he brought us from this to that. I don't know what your this is, but he brought you from this to that. He's the God that parts red seas. He's the God that moves mountains. He's the God, come on, he's the God who speaks to us in the midnight hour. He is that God and he's the God that never changes. When everything else changes, when everything else switches up on you, he is the God that never changes. He's the God that will be faithful until the end of the world. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the Lord, the word of our God, it stands forever, 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 forever. It stands forever. And so we glorify and we magnify a God that's been good. Look at somebody and just say, God has been good. Come on, look at the other person next to you and say, I don't know what you've experienced. And I'm not trying to be insensitive. But above your circumstance, I make this declaration that God is good today. He's good yesterday. And he will forever be good. Now give a good God a great praise. Come on. To give a good God a great praise. I feel some of y'all. Don't try to figure out where I'm going. Where we're at right now is give a good God a great praise. I woke up with praise on my lips. Nobody had to put this praise in my mouth. I woke up and I said, Lord, I love you. My father used to say something and I get it now. He used to say, oh, to be kept by Jesus. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Somebody just shout, he's a keeper. He's a, he's a keeper. And he'll keep you when you don't want to be kept. Somebody should have praised him real strong there. Because he'll keep you even when you don't want to be kept. Right. Takari, don't holler like that. He's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. He's good, he's good, he's good. Um, hmm. well, um, I want to talk to y'all today. Can I talk? Okay, I want to talk to y'all. I don't know if I'm going to preach, but I'm going I'm to talk. But if I'm provoked, I might preach. Uh, but let's see what the Lord does. Amen. We're going to Acts, the 16th chapter. Um, I'm going to read verses 4 through 10. It's really the backdrop, really, of, of our conversation today. Um, and on the surface, you might say, what, what, is, what are we talking about? Especially since I'm going to pronounce these names wrong. But y'all, y'all don't know the difference no way. So... Let's go with God on this one. All right? um, we're going to read from the NIV version, uh, and it says this. It says, as they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches went, the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. The churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they, became, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, 
we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, um, and our, our theme for this morning is Faith Moves. Faith Moves is our theme for this morning. And, and as I said, I, I want to talk to you. This is really um, a backdrop, um, really an introduction to really what I want to say. Um, when we look at this, this passage, we know um, that the early church um, in the book of Acts, um, they were all about spreading the gospel. In fact, it was the very last thing that Jesus had commissioned them to do was to go into all the worlds, right, and to preach the gospel to everyone, those who wanted to hear it, those who didn't want to hear it. The commission was to spread the truth of the gospel to every region, to every land. And so when we get to this passage and we see that there was a desire from Paul, there was a desire from the people that accompanied Paul to go into Asia, it is strange, if you will, that the Lord is the one who is keeping them from preaching the gospel in Asia. It would seem that it would be his desire to continue to push the word of God forward in every single place that they desire to go. But in this passage, we see that it is the Holy Spirit himself that restricts them from being able to go into Asia. And the message for us today is that we've got to be able to shift with the spirit in the spirit. Shift with the spirit in the spirit. Look at somebody and say, shift with the spirit. Yes. Wherever the Lord leads, that's where we go. And where he does not lead, we do not go. Because every, not everything that is good is God. I said not everything that is good is God. It would have been a good thing for Paul and his, uh, uh, his, his companions to enter into Asia. That was a good intention, but it was not a God move for them at that time. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, um, we've, got, we've got an update for you um, on our building. Okay. There's an update for you on, on our building. So I want to take you back to the day that we announced it. We announced, we celebrated, we shouted, but before that happened, y'all remember, Apostle Oscar Gubadia was here with us, yes? And he began to give the word of the Lord. And I, I pray y'all remember this because there was a commission that was given to this church. Uh, he pulled me up on the stage. He grabbed me by the hand and I said, oh, Holy Ghost, help me. Because I could feel in the moment that he was prepping me for something. And so he grabbed me by the hand and the commission that he gave to y'all was that you needed to pray for your pastor and specifically he said that you had to pray because there were some legal things that were coming my way y'all remember that right okay so that was on Sunday on Wednesday I got a message from the realtors from the place that we were going into to say that we could not occupy the space because there were laws that were preventing us as a public assembly from being in that building Look at somebody and say, that's terrible news. But tell them, but it doesn't end there. Look at them and say, that's terrible news. But it does not end there. Because there's always a ram in the bush. Look at somebody and say, there's a ram in the bush. Tell them it will not end like this. So I want to take y'all, y'all remember Genesis chapter 22, Abraham gets a call from God, he gets a commission from God, he says, he says to Abraham, he says, Abraham, the son that I gave you, the promise that I gave you, I want you to take that same son, I want you to go up on this mountain, and I want you to sacrifice your son as an offering to me. The very thing that I promised to you, I want you to sacrifice that very thing to me. Y'all remember that? Okay, so what did, what did Abraham do? Abraham obeyed the Lord. He took the very thing that the Lord had promised, and he went up the hill. He prepared uh, himself. He prepared Isaac. He prepared them for the sacrifice. And as he's about to slay his son, there was a second set of instructions. Look at somebody and say, wait for the second set of instructions. Because if you miss the second set of instructions, you will miss the provision of God. It is the place where he said, Jehovah Jireh, that the Lord will provide. Because God himself provided a ram in the bush, and he provided us a ram in the bush as well. And so, 
With that being said, we are not homeless. Not only are we not homeless, but the Lord has provided what I believe to be better for us. Because we are right now at 115 South McQuestion Parkway. And our new location is 55 South McQuestion Parkway, which is right on the corner <laughs> of this lot. We're going from here to there. Look at somebody say, we're going from here to there. We're just going from here to there. Now listen, let me say this. It's the same amount of space that we are gonna have before. So nothing has changed in terms of the amount of space that we're going to have. The sanctuary is double the size that we have right now. The Lord has provided for us. We have received great favor with God and man. Here's the thing. Let me say this. So, so years ago, there was a word that the Lord had given to me. And he said, he basically said, he said, tell me what you want. Now, some of y'all might have remembered this. He said, what, whatever you want. That's what I'm going to do. My desire, my desire was always that we would stay in Mount Vernon. That was always my desire. I believe that we've been called to this community. I'm not saying for life, but for this season, I believe that we were called to this community. And so as much as I love that other building, because I did love that other building, there was still one thing that felt like, oh, God, I just wish that we could have remained in our community. In fact, the, the full truth is, sorry, I'm getting things as I'm standing here. The full truth is I wanted to remain on this block. Some of y'all know that. I, I did not want to leave this block. Some of y'all were praying about us not leaving this block and the Lord has provided. Can we just give God praise just one more time for the provision of God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But we trust the plan of God. We trust the timing of God. We trust the provision of God. We trust it. We trust it. We trust it. Y'all sit. Y'all sit. 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 sit, sit. So I'm, I'm almost done already with my little talk. But the question that I have for you all, because I want you to see the bigger picture here, what if plan A is preparation for plan B? Coming to your house now. What if it's not actually about that plan, but it's about the process? Adulting 101. When, when, when the children of Israel, when they, when they crossed over into the promised land, we forget to read the whole Bible. When they crossed over into the promised land, they did not just get everything all at once. It actually took them seven years to acquire the full promised land that the Lord had given to them. There was a, there was a process for acquisition and every closed door led to a new opportunity. And so my prayer is that, as always, that you would not just see this as what is happening to our church, but that you would apply this to your lives, that for everything that you think is closed, it is an opportunity for something new to be birthed, for something new to be given, for something new to be discovered, for something new to be provided by God himself. You might have to fight for it, but if God said it's yours, it's yours, it's settled, it's done, it's finished, and there is no devil in hell that's going to be able to stop it because I see victory. Because the battle... It belongs to the Lord. This is what it looks like when you are making faith moves. Because when you are moving by faith, you've got to be able to remain flexible and open to new directions as the Lord speaks. We don't just hold on to the first thing, but whatever you're speaking in the moment, I'm willing to go with it because I know that the end is victory. You've got to have a willingness to be able to adapt to plans and to adjust expectations as he unfolds his plan. Look at somebody and say, keep moving by faith. Keep, come on, tell him, keep moving by faith because somebody needs to hear that because there are some giants, there are some obstacles, there are some things that are standing in your way. But I understand that whatever God says must come to pass. And so I keep moving by faith. Look at somebody else and tell him, keep moving by faith I heard you Brianna by faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice
sacrifice by faith Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death by faith Noah constructed an ark and he saved his entire household by faith Abraham he obeyed when he was called to a place that he had never seen before but he had a promise on his life that he would receive the inheritance that God had promised by faith he went to live in the land of promise by faith Sarah received the power to conceive even when she was past the age of childbearing by faith the people of God crossed the Red Sea on dry land but the Egyptians when they attempted to do the same they were drowned in that same sea look at somebody and say the enemy you see today you will see no more forever by faith the walls of Jericho fell down flat after seven days of going around what was promised and they brought it down with a shout and by faith fresh start will possess the land that the Lord has given to us somebody shout by faith by faith by faith by faith we will take territory for the kingdom of God by faith we'll continue to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord by faith by faith we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living I wish we had some people who were full of faith that would open up your mouth and give God great praise for what I do not yet see but I Ears have not heard, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It hasn't entered into the heart of man the things he's prepared for them that love him. Where are the people who love God? If you love God, you can trust God. If you love God, you can trust God. Right there, give him great praise because we're taking territory for the kingdom. And it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass. Not one word spoken, not one word spoken will fall to the ground. Not one word spoken will fall to the ground because he will not let you be put to shame. He will not let you be put to to shame somebody shout there's a word over this church and there's a word on my life there's a word over this church and there's a word over my life and since God is not like man it means that he cannot lie he cannot lie he cannot lie he cannot lie and he will never change never change I am the God who changes not whatever he gives he doesn't repent for it so whatever he gives he does not repent for what he has given in other words he does not take it back he does not change his mind but what I said back then I'm performing now I said what I said back then I am performing now what I spoke over you then I'm performing now what I declared back then I'm settling it now I'm settling it now I'm settling it I'm settling it now ah all right so in Acts, I want to just bring this back and then I'm done. In Acts chapter 18, Paul eventually, he makes his way to Asia to preach the gospel. And he remained there for three years. Why is this important? Because I want you to know that it's a not yet, it's not a no. Man, I don't know who needs to hear that. It's a not yet, it's not a no. And you need to make sure that you do not mistake a not yet for a no. 
but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. Come on. They shall run and not faint. It's a no. It's a not yet, not a no. So, so we, we were aware that the next stop was just a pit stop in our journey. Hello? We were aware that the next stop was just a pit stop in our journey. The Lord has a permanent place in mind for us. I was waiting for somebody to celebrate. The Lord has a permanent place in mind for us. But until that day comes, we will celebrate what he's provided now. We will not wait for the permanent to give him glory. But in my temporary, in my tent, I'll give him glory in the tent while we wait on the temple. I said we'll give him glory in the tent while we wait on the temple. I know who's with me. We'll give him glory in the tent while we wait on the temple. I wish some people that's in this room who were with us would open up your mouth and give him glory for the tent, for the tent, for the tent, for the tent of meeting. I'll give him glory. Give him glory. Because I once was young, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I wish somebody would open up your mouth and say, I am the righteousness of God. Come on, open up your mouth and say, I am the righteousness of God. And so there's never going to be a day that I'll need to beg. I won't be begging. I'm not a beggar. I'm not a beggar. I'm a son. I'm not a beggar. I'm a son. I'm not a beggar. I am a son. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. So, strap a chair to your back and walk it down the street. <laughs> we ain't got far to go. And so, y'all can say it. I'm actually done. How can you help? What's next? That's the, the logical question. Look at somebody and tell them prayer changes things. Come on, look at them, tell them, tell them. Prayer, prayer changes things. So how can you help pray? Pray with understanding and pray in the Holy Ghost. Because there is nothing that can stop us from possessing what the Lord has spoken to us. How else can you help? Praise. Somebody told me that praise confuses the enemy. I wish I had a church that knew how to praise the Lord. I said praise confuses the enemy. I said praise. Gotcha. Praise confuses the enemy. When you're supposed to be sad, praise confuses the enemy when you're supposed to be frustrated praise confuses when you're supposed to be angry praise confuses when you're supposed to be in shame praise confuses the enemy and i don't know if you like me but i don't want no enemy knowing what i'm doing next and so in order to block in order to block him from understanding what the next move is why don't you open up your mouth right there and just offer up a praise because I don't that's confusing that's I don't understand that why are they still hollering I thought they was gonna be sad why why are they still giving you supposed to be sad you supposed to be frustrated you supposed to be fearful but instead I hear hallelujah <laughs> Come on, stay there for a second. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Confuse him. Not just here. Not just here. I'm trying to teach you what to do at work. When you're frustrated and you're about to quit and about to give up, I wish instead you would offer up a praise at your desk, that you would offer up a praise in the lunchroom, that you would offer up a praise in the business meeting at the boardroom, offer up a praise. It's confusing, it's confusing, it's confusing. Put the enemy to shame with your praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Come on. It's designed to kill what's in your mouth. It's designed to kill what's in your mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the, the Lord at all times. And his praise, his praise shall con continue be in my mouth. For every bad diagnosis, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. When you got that text message that said overdrawn, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. When you got in that car accident, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, when the kids start acting real crazy, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. When you're frustrated because you feel like you gotta do it all by yourself, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? Because I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Great deliverer, we give you praise. Strong tower, we give you praise. Way out of nowhere, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We don't complain. We give you praise. We don't complain. We give you praise. You too good to complain. Be. And for this, and for this, we get. I wish y'all would think about some things. And for this, for this, for this, we give you praise. Songwriter said, "For every mountain." you brought me over for for every trial that you've seen me through for every blessing lift it up for every blessing for every blessing for every blessing for every blessing there's a hallelujah that goes right there for this we give you This is supposed to be a talk. This is supposed to be a talk. But I feel a praise. I said it's supposed to be a talk. But I, I feel a praise. Because the Bible told me that he teaches my hands to war. I said, I see. He teaches my hands to war. Some of y'all thought that was about fighting, but he teaches my hands to war he I wish you would put your hands together real strong come on Paul I need you push it. put your hands together real strong he teaches my hands to war Come on, while you're clapping, look at somebody and say, this is a corporate blessing. So can you bless him with me? Come on, tell him it's a corporate blessing. So you got to bless him with me. I can't do it by myself.
Come on, we bless him just as strong on a pivot as we do the original declaration. I said we bless him as strong on the pivot as we do the original declaration. we 
Anybody ready to take territory? I said, is any of y'all fake and weak? Anybody ready to take territory? You can't te take territory and be weak with it. But we are taking territory for the kingdom of God. We are taking territory for the kingdom of of God. Look at somebody and say, faith moves, faith, faith moves, faith moves. I don't know what your personal faith move is, but I know whatever's happening in this house, because you're attached to it, it can happen in your house. And for this, we give him praise. Clap your hands one more time and give him the glory.